Hey guys, we appreciate you tuning back in with us for this second part of this prophetic, I'm going to say, call it an awakening. Because there is a cry that's coming out in this that's going to call you to awake. Stay tuned with us. We'll be right back and begin to unpack part two. Okay, so I mentioned a dream in uh, part one, and I just bumped it a little bit, but I wanna go ahead and tell you about this dream. So it was kind of in a country setting, and I was in a, uh, I came to a three-story uh, house, plain wood frame house. It was kind of a barn red color, and uh, we was in the third floor of this house and on this third floor, there was people sitting all around. It was a church, like a church service, a home type service. There was people sitting all around. There was no formal setting. There wasn't a, wasn't a pulpit. There wasn't a band. There wasn't any of that. And I was up and I was just kind of walking through the people and they were sitting on couches and in chairs and love seats and the lights were semi-dim and I was just kind of walking through them and talking and teaching and uh, as I was walking through there there was a guy that was sitting on like a love seat and he was real slouched down and he challenged what I was saying and when I looked at him I saw there was a, a demon spirit in him and I just turned to him and I said come out of him when I did that immediately this spirit erupted in him and it came out and it was kind of uh it only happened just for a few seconds but it was fairly violent and uh, and but when that happened the whole place erupted and uh, all of these demon spirits that were in that room stirred up immediately all of them boom just like that and uh, people started uh, yelling and cursing and and I just started going through and casting out these demons. Some jumped up and they ran out. And uh, so when it was all said and done, it didn't last a real long time, but when it was all said and done, it was about maybe 10 minutes of it. But the ones that ran out were downstairs and they were yelling back up, threatening and stuff like that. And so we knew that to get out of there, we had to go back down through them and we knew that there was some outside that was there to ambush us when we came out. But we also knew that because of the, the power of God that was in us, we didn't have to worry about these spirits. And so we started down through there and the ones that were downstairs that were uh, confronting us, as we started down the stairs, they retreated. They started backing up. So we get on down there and step outside and it's dark outside it's sort of moonlit but it's nighttime and so we're looking across there and these uh there was a mobile home right by there and i went over to this mobile home and there was a lady that came to the door and i knew her i don't want anybody to get offended at this that i'm about to say but the lady is about 500 pounds she's she's a very large lady and uh as i spoke to her she said real rough like she said what's going on over there and i said well that uh, been casting out demons oh really she said and i said yeah and she said well i want to go see i said well okay and i looked and the threshold of the door right there was about probably three to four feet high. It was pretty high. And she was fixing to step out and I called her name and I said, watch out. And she fell and she fell out the doorway and landed on her hands and knees. Uh, normally I wouldn't want anybody to fall, but a, a woman that's that large, I thought, oh my God, she's hurt. She's gonna be hurt bad, probably broke something, you know? And so I'm, um, 
she's kind of moving and trying to get up. And I'm saying, don't, don't, just be still, hold on, let's make sure you're okay. And I reached down with my, I was standing on her left side, I reached down with my left hand and kind of put right here on her, around her bicep and my other hand on the shoulder, I was gonna see if I could get her to stand up or sit up on her knees and see if she's okay. And when I touched her, she shot her head around like that and looked at me and she took off on all fours like a spider and she ran three or four times faster than any human could run and uh, ran on out, out of sight. And uh, I woke up, my heart was pounding, <laughs> my, uh, my adrenaline was going and I knew that this woman also manifested. And then I had actually messed with her uh, nest, if you will. And so, uh, I, since that time, I've shared that, that dream with a few people. This was just like last week I had this dream. But uh, I, this morning I was talking to my wife about it. And one of the things that we were saying is that, or that God showed me is that, that setting of the of the church service in there was very casual and the lord was speaking to me even this morning saying that's the condition of my church my church is way too casual uh that the formality of gathering together as the people of god has been uh somehow lost in the fabric of the church i know we can over ritualize our gatherings but we can also make it too casual. Everybody's not the same in there. It's not just lay around on love seats and and uh, with dim lights and pay attention if you want to, don't if you want to. We're gathering together as the body of Christ. So this dream comes into play here, how that suddenly, boom, that quick, just that quick, suddenly, that spirit spoke out and it was cast out and everything erupted. This is what I'm talking about. It's coming this summer. So listen, I don't want to make it all about uh, a lack of faith or what the church is doing wrong because that's not what this video is about. What this video is about is what to expect coming. So I see in the, in the book of Acts when we look at the church without the physical entity of Jesus there, okay? The New Testament church that had to trust in the indwelling of the Spirit inside of them, and what did they do? How did they go about it? Well, I wanna ask you, how, how does things compare now? to the church without the physical body of Jesus walking here and coming and sitting on this bench with me and saying, oh, Brother Jim, this is what you need to do. That's what you need to do. Need a healing? Let me lay hands on you. Sometimes we need to lay hands on ourselves. We need to stir up our most holy faith. And, and when we do that, trust God for the outcome. So when we look at the church and where it's at now, how it's going, what it looks like, and what it looked like in the book of Acts, I see a vast difference. I, I see something that is so foreign and so far apart from one another that I wonder, I, I'm just gonna say it, I wonder if God still sees it as his church because I wonder sometimes, is this still his church? Did, did it turn, I mean, he still has a church, he's never been without it. There's always been a remnant. But what I'm telling you is that this, this year, mid-year, the church is gonna start stepping back out into the open, stepping out of the shadows, stepping into what God has called us to be. And in doing that, 
it's going to stir some things up. It's going to ruffle some feathers. Uh, some ministries are going to get challenged with your tax exempt status. Huh? Some ministries are going to get challenged with your tax exempt status. Will you hold the mark still? I pray that you will. Some ministries are going to get challenged with that. Some are going to get challenged with their finances because they have a crowd around them right now. Some ministries have a crowd around them right now that are not there. They're there for the loaves and fishes, but they're not there to be special forces, front line warriors. We're blood bought, filled with the Holy Ghost and walking at, in thus saith the Lord. And so we don't have to have new age seances in our church to hear what God is saying or have something revealed. We simply say, show me God. Go to the first chapter of John and look down there in the interaction between Jesus and Philip and Nathaniel. Down around the 40, I think it starts around the 43rd verse, something like that. Correct me if, you, if I'm wrong, I'm fine with that. 43, 44, 45, down through there. So Philip goes and uh, he finds uh, there in Bethesda, which that's where Philip was from. That's where I believe it was Peter and John was from there, uh, or Andrew. Some of those, there were others that were from there. And, uh, and he said, come, come, we have found the Messiah. Come and see. And he was telling him, and Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Anything? No. So what he's saying is, I don't really believe this, but I'll go with you. And so he went down there, and <coughs> he began to kind of question a little. And Jesus said this to him. He said, before Philip came to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathaniel was like, what? He knew that Philip couldn't have told him that, so he had, and he was under a fig tree, obviously. And so now he has, Jesus has his undivided attention. And he said, Rabbi, thou art the son of God, the king of Israel. Now I'm gonna just speak in East Texas terms, okay? Jesus said, Man, you, you just, you're saying that because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You know that I have a prophetic insight. And he said, but you ain't seen nothing yet. He said, you're going to see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending through that portal. Ah, man. So I'm telling you, you hadn't seen anything yet. God can use you to bring about a, a breaking of some of those demonic realms that is anchored in the church. See, this is one of the things that God's going to do. He's going to wake up. He's going to wake up and open our spiritual eyes, our spiritual ears. We're going to be, begin to see and hear things. We're going to start touching things that's been untouched. We're going to start walking in some areas that most are not walking in now. And the power and the authority of God is going to be with you as you do it. Are you ready for that now? I mean, I know you want it to happen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Grant it, Lord. I know you want it to happen, but are you ready? Is the oil in your lamp? Is your wick trimmed? Are you ready to burn? for Jesus and shine light across this in the middle of a battle. Sounds awesome to watch uh, Chuck Norris go in to some place in some of the old movies and 
rescue somebody that's hanging in a bamboo cage in a jungle someplace. But are you ready for that? Most of us are not. But God is, what I'm telling you is, you get ready to see when the, when the midnight cry went out and those that had oil in their lamps, their life changed just like that. Boom. It changed. They were never the same. So this year, mid-year, be ready. Have the framework in place. God's not going to translate you to a, a planet somewhere else. I heard somebody preach one time about planet heaven. <laughs> He's not translating you somewhere else. He's going to activate you here. Right here. God's going to activate you to work. See, I don't think it's time for the church to leave here. I think it's time for the church to get to work. To go to work. So as we're looking into this that's happening around us and getting ready now, we're, we're putting the framework together for everything. And we're, we're determining and listening and praying, listening in the spirit and saying, God, show us, show us what it is that you want us to do. You don't have to show me what I'm gonna be doing at that time, show me what I need to do now to be ready for that time. It's okay. God may show some of you more that's on the other side. But it is vitally important that we see how to get to the other side first. That seems to be one of the biggest things right now to me. How do we get there? Not just what are we going to do after we get there. God will show you what to do, whether he shows you on uh, that mo at that moment, on a daily basis, whatever. See, I don't think Peter and John said, let's, let's go do a miracle today. I feel it. Woo. I don't think Peter said, hey, I, I believe we're going to go do a miracle today. I don't think John held up and went, oh, Lord, I felt, look at them goosebumps on my arm. Let's go. I don't think that's what happened. I think they were walking about their daily life. They were already ready, had the oil in the lamp. And the guy jingled his little cup. He said, alms, alms, and boom, they were activated right there at that moment. And Peter looked at him and said, silver and gold, have I, not? I don't have any money, but I got something you need. My God, I got something you need. See, we've got to have something that they need first. It's got to be in place first. So when we have what we need, then, then we can walk in the power of the book of Acts. Without it, we can just talk about it is all. But when we have what we need, then we can do what Paul did in the 16th chapter of Acts. And we can turn to that woman with a spirit of divination and say, come out and the spirit tore her. You say, boy, sure got him and Silas in trouble though. They got beaten and thrown in jail. Yeah. And then another miracle happened. At midnight, they prayed and sang praises to God and an earthquake shook the jail and opened all the doors. <laughs> Hallelujah. But see, if you don't have oil in your lamp, you can't do that. Uh, if you don't have oil in your lamp and you're in the shipwreck, and you're up there and that poison viper bites you on the hand, you're probably gonna die. But Paul had the oil in his lamp. It was in him, he was the lamp. The oil was in him, the anointing was in him. And he shook that viper off into the fire. Glory to God. And when he did that, first they said because he was bit, they said, this man must be a murderer. They kept watching him. He didn't even get sick. Not only did he not die, he didn't even get sick. They said, surely this man is a God. <laughs> uh, you see, getting the oil in the lamp is not something you tote around in your hand. You're the lamp. 
you're the lamp. Matthew 5, he said, now ye, you, you, right there, you're the light of the world. Not, hey, be watching the mail. Be watching for UPS or FedEx to pull up because I'm sending you a lamp. I want you to have that with No, 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 no. He said, you're the lamp. You're the light of the world. And I need you to shine. Hallelujah. I need you to shine. And when you shine, you're going to reveal darkness and darkness has to back away. <laughs> darkness has to back away. So, wow. Because they had all that Peter and John healed that man. Because of the because of the oil. Because of the oil that uh, another time when Peter was in prison, an angel came in there and got him. Y'all remember the, the scripture? An angel came in there and bumped him on the side and said, hey, come on, let's go. And they walked right out of the prison. How'd they do that? I don't know, I wasn't there. But I believe it happened. They walked right out of the prison. When they got out past the, the fourth watch, got out past that that zone of, of watch, we're going to talk about that in a bit, got out past that, Peter looked around and the angel was gone. So he went on down to where they were having the prayer meeting. He knocked on the gate and the little girl Rhoda came out and she ran back inside and said, Peter's at the gate. They were having a prayer meeting trying to figure out how to get Peter out of prison. I said, Peter's at the gate. And they said, girl, you crazy. That dude is locked up tight. I said, it must be his angel. She went back and she looked again, come back and she said, nope, it's Peter. <laughs> it's not his angel, it's Peter. See, they were praying, but they didn't have the faith to believe that God could deliver. Do you believe? Do you believe that God can deliver? It's, it's where we are, church. We're talking about an activation of the church through the power of Pentecost. That's coming back to the church. Some will never see it happen talking about the guy earlier that saw the the woman that had that demonic realm inside of her and I said the reason they said we've been watching her see no 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 real true Pentecostal that's anointed would just watch somebody that they feel is demonic they're going to do something about it why was she able to dwell in their presence all this time and them not do something? And I told him, I said, I brought that to his attention. He said, I don't know. I said, it's real simple. They know how to talk about it, but they don't know what to do about it. Well, there's people that are going to start doing something about it. And you could be one of them. God's dealing with you. If you feel disenfranchised, if you feel rejected, if you feel put out, if you feel like that, that the uh, church world has passed you by, thank him. Thank him for it. He separated you from all that junk. He separated you from that. And he's letting you be purified right now. Hallelujah. He's letting you be purified and getting that oil. He's squeezing, squeezing, squeezing that oil squeezing those olives so that oil will drip out squeezing it so the oil will drip out and you're letting it drip into your lamp this lamp right here you're letting it drip into you one drop at a time one drop at a time one drop at a time it's coming in it's coming in even as i speak it's coming in some of you are feeling the anointing now it's coming in But don't you dare get up from there till you're full. Hallelujah. Get full. 
I had a friend of mine preach the message one time. He said, you're full of it. And if you're not, you can be before you leave. <laughs> Glory. Hold on. I'm going to do another segment on this right here. Church, our time is up on this part right here. It's really a little longer than I wanted it to be, but listen, stay tuned for part three. And there, there's some good stuff we're going to be talking about framework and how to establish that. Uh, so when we are activated and we're ready and God is ready, everything will already be in place. God bless you. And right here in East Texas, I'm still keeping the faith. God bless. Mm -hmm.